Oh, hey, who? Oh, me, sir. What are, you, what are you doing here? Who are you? Studying. The school. I'm Matthew Evans. I'll be attending here. Oh, I see, I see. I want to look around first. Matt spent most of his life in the High Sierras, Mr. Kaufman. Growing things, living things, they're part of his life. Well, he ought to do well in botany anyhow. Where'd you learn about math, science, English? Well, Dad and I studied together. I brought along a library. He used it. He learned to use his hands and his mind. He's had a better education than most schools could have given him. And without wasting his time learning to follow along with the crowd. Hopefully that's uh, not all we teach here. That's not all I know, sir. I can fell a tree, track just about anything. That I know. Build a house or live without one. I can survive in bad country at 40 below. Well, this country's not so bad. Hardly ever gets to 40 below. Matthew, nice having you with us. If you see Miss McIntyre, she'll discuss your program with you. I'll get by. I know you will. And he will. You know, I brought him to the mountains when he was seven years old. A little boy. And now he's a grown young man. That's great. That's sort of every father's dream, isn't it? But the law still requires that he be educated in a school, not at home. I read the court order. Oh, that wasn't our doing, you know, Mr. Adams. Oh, I understand that, Mr. Kaufman. But you know, a man needs space to be himself, to make his own education. Tell me something, feeling the way you do, why bring Matt to Los Angeles? Well, our land was 86 miles from the nearest town. Not much of a town. This city will be a shock to him. The law requires he goes to school till he's 18. By the end of the year, he'll have seen smog, dirt, people in swarms. He'll be ready to go back to the mountains, and he'll know why. The problem of land use is becoming more important. It's about time. The land we have in the city is really badly used. What are some of the causes of that? Well, one big thing is the migration of people from the country to the cities. Did you know that we began with an almost empty continent and then added nearly 200 million people? But 90% of the population lives on 2% of the land. True. What do you think about that? I'd rather live on the other 98%. Wednesday, Martian Society and Rap Session, Mr. Dixon. Most of us bring lunch on Wednesday and we get together with Mr. Dixon. Just to, you know, talk. Why don't you come along, Matt? Well, I... You have the entrance requirements. <laughs> okay. Okay. Can I just listen? Sure. And that's the problem with cities today. People jammed into crowds. Crowds sometimes, but really groups. Now, is that good or bad? The bigger the group, the more each one of us loses. Loses what? Room to breathe. Room to grow, change, to build, whatever. What do you want to build? My father and I built the house we live in. We had 200 acres with a tent on it. That first summer, Dad and I dug back into the side of the mountain, made a shelter. Man, you mean you lived in a cave? All winter, and we were fine. Come summer, we started building the house. Well, how old were you? Seven. Boy, my kid brother's nine, and he can't even make his own bed. <laughs> my dad's a builder. He did most of the rough work. How'd you live? We raised our own vegetables and grain. I'm a good baker. Bread, anyway. But we made everything we had. You mean you start to work in May and end up with a slice of toast for Christmas? <laughs> May I slide down to the store and pay the man four bits? It's easier. <laughs> I think what Matt's point is, though, is which is more satisfying? I think the way you live is just fantastic. Let's see, high school English level. Reading and comprehension, good. Syntax and fundamentals, weak. Math is fine. History needs some work. This education's been pretty uneven. Mm. He seems to know more about botany than the expert that wrote this test. Hi. Hi. Oh, what a cute outfit. Hello. Thanks. I just had to throw it together. I got up early this morning to wash out a few things, and my washing machine overflowed. I was up to my ankles in suds. Boy, don't you just get sick of machinery sometimes? At least once a day. Hmm. By the way, we're talking about Matt Evans. If you're going to tutor him in English, you might be interested. Oh, I am. Can he read? Well, he hasn't read all the bestsellers, but he's read a lot of the classics. You know, we're the first professional teachers he's ever had. It's kind of a challenge. Yeah, he's never really had to deal with people, especially people his own age. How's he doing in your class? So far, fine. He just likes running on his own track. Well, we don't 
I have to change that, do we? No way. There you go. You're all set. And this is your locker. You get your own lock. Well, why do I need a lock? So that you don't get ripped off. Yeah, man, there's a lot of dudes who left a wallet or a watch on. Some are just bust in for a stick of gum. I guess that's one way to tell you're in civilization. What are all these? It's your forms. It's your medical OK form, your parent permission card, your academic OK form, your sports background form, your sports interest form, your special equipment form, your standard deposit form. But why? Why can't I just tell whoever it is? Tell that... a computer. Hey, who stole my sweat socks? Who steal a dirty pair of used sweat socks? Hey, man, it's not that bad. You just got to learn the moves. Hey, what sport are you going out for? Well, I used to run. Or in winter, uh, skiing or snowshoeing. Far out, man. I can see it now. Evans wins Southern California snowshoe race. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but really, you have to pick something. And get the farms turned in before the 12th. By the time they find out, I'll have graduated. It's good. I'm sure the architect would be happy to hear that. No, no, it's really good. It's beautiful. And, and one man did it? Well, it started with one man. Would you like to do something like that, Matt? <sighs> Who wouldn't? Well, a lot of people are satisfied just looking at a great piece of architecture. <laughs> well, that's like finding a clear mountain stream and not fishing it. Matt, if you're going to do something special like that, you know you have to train for it. I'm not kidding myself, Mr. Dixon. You don't get that training up in the Sierras. No. And that's where I'm going to be. I appreciate the interest you're taking in my son, Mr. Dixon. Thank you. You know, he really enjoyed seeing that building. I think so, too. That's all he talked about last night. Well, good. And the trip did what it was supposed to do. Well, wait a minute, Mr. Dixon. Uh, just what was it supposed to do? Look, Mr. Evans, your son showed an interest in architecture. Now, all I did was show him an interesting building. That's all? That's all. If a teacher can stimulate a student's interest, I think that's a lot. I guess so. And after that, it's up to the student. As long as we both understand that, Mr. Dixon. Hi. Sorry I'm late. What are you guys into? We were talking about this old park. It ain't even a park. It's an ecological disaster area. Where is it? Not far from school. A lot of older people live near it. You know, they could really use it if it were fixed up. That sounds like bad use of the land, or no use of the land. Well, can anything be done about it? I think we should petition our councilman to do something about it. Or better yet, the mayor. The newspapers. Or TV, maybe. Hey, start a little rally, make a little fuss. Yeah, then the news media would really take notice. Why not just fix it up? That's what we're discussing, Matt. No. You're talking about talking. About asking someone else to do something else. And when you're up in the mountains and you see something you want to do or need to do, you don't fool around, you just do it. Yeah. I mean... Why not just fix it up? Get the people, clear it, plan it, put up a shelter? How hard can it be to build a park? What do you think, Mr. Dixon? Sounds like a great idea. Roll it even and plant grass? That won't be hard. And flower beds for borders. And a shelter there, a table and some benches. Sounds great. What are you going to do for lumber supplies? We'll scrounge around, dig some up. Pardon me? Please? Uh, excuse me, but uh, if you're looking for a place to play a ball game... Well, no, sir. We were just... Well, would you folks mind if we fix this park up a little? Oh, oh. I can tell you're not from the city. No. <laughs> well, women, hi. We just like to do it. Young man, for six years now I've been coming to this place. In the sun, it's dust. Rain, mud. You want to fix it up? You have my blessing. Great. What about the city? We'll need permission. Well, that's your department. Okay, I'll find out about it. You the teacher? Yes, one of them. So you are the good teacher. It's not really a school project. I know that, but I'd just kind of like you to keep an eye on it unofficially. Okay. You talking about the park? Yeah. How's it going? Well, it's just getting started. Did they get all the material they need? 
Yeah, the owner of a lumber company donated all the wood. How'd they manage that? Well, Matt promised him he would name the park after him. <laughs> I really admire Matt. He has his own kind of pizzazz. Mountain style. No, I'm serious. I mean, you don't realize how many different ways there are to live until you meet somebody like Matt. Oh, are you considering changing your lifestyle, Miss Johnson? Well, I never have before, but I wouldn't mind something a little simpler than what we've got. Would you? No, I must say I wouldn't. Hey, man, you got some nice moves. Hey, well, you know, youthful training. I had this out-of-sight pegboard kit when I was three. You know, pegs all over the place. Nice hey, pegs. man, keep shooting. Well, how do you like it, Mr. Rosen? Without question, it's unique. Hey, man, you need any help with that? I needed help when I was hammering in that last nail. Well, you should have waited till I got back, man. Should have waited till I got back, man. Now he tells me. <laughs> Yeah, man, this is one of the best things Walt Whitman has ever done. And we wouldn't have done it if it hadn't been for you. Well, it wouldn't have got done if it hadn't been for all of us. But mostly you. <laughs> <laughs> You really did a great job. Yeah, I've never seen Frank Lloyd Wright's first park, but this must be just as good. Mr. Grady? That's right. <laughs> Here it is. Take a good look now. There's some wonderful people here that I want you to meet. Now, uh, the explanation. Well, it's my pleasure. This deserves a medal here, at least. So I called up the city and I told them these kids here are doing an absolutely first-class job. Well, Mr. Grady, isn't this something? It sure is. Well, does the construction come up to specifications? Oh, it's a first-class job of construction. I even like the colors. Too bad. What is? Well, now, you kids should have checked with the city before you did all this. City master plan calls for a park on this site. A little behind schedule, but work was planning to start next year. Planning, benches, recreation area, and an access entry to the underground power and water lines, which lie right beneath this. Got to have constant access to those lines. If you'd have built it 20 feet over. I'm sorry, but uh, we're going to have to tear it down. I thought they had all the permits. I told you a lot of other people. Hey, man, that sure was a bummer at the park. What do you want me to do, bang my head on the wall and cry? Man. Hey, now we all got chewed up. The question is why? Because of lousy nitpicking regulations. I got all the information. And I went down there, and they kept shuffling me around. Window 27, stand in line. Window 13, fill it out in triplicate. I mean, I could have spent my life down there, and then they probably would have told us to forget it. At least they would have told us before we'd done it, man. I made a mistake. I forgot the religion down here is paper shuffling. Hey, you didn't make a mistake. But maybe this time the paper should have been shuffled. You went off on an ego trip and took us all right off the edge with you. Nobody was drafted. We all wanted to help Matt. Do it together. But you weren't thinking about anybody but you. I wanted to get it done. I mean, doesn't anybody in this big city of yours understand that? I wanted to get it done. Well, it's done, man. It's overdone. It's burnt. So what do you want from me? Hey, an apology wouldn't be too bad.
accept you. I have to apologize to you. What? If I didn't call the city, this wouldn't happen. It would have happened. That's their jobs, to make things like this happen. satisfied. Me? Well, you're the one who started this whole thing. My son wouldn't have been involved if it hadn't been for you. Your son is not in this thing alone, Mr. Evans. My son shouldn't have been in it at all. He got into it of his own free choice. As a matter of fact, this was his idea. Look, you've been trying to sell the city to him ever since we came down here. I haven't tried to sell Matt anything. Well, I hope he sees now what a rotten place it really is. You know, for all of your talk about freedom to do your own thing and to be what you want, you certainly don't grant that freedom to your own son. Mr. Dixon, my son can do what he wants. As long as it's climbed back up on your mountain. Well, I happen to think it's better than here. Maybe it is, but you can't prove it by what happened here. Now, Matt knew permission was necessary and he chose to ignore it. That's okay as long as you're in something alone. But it's not okay when a lot of other people are involved. And that's more proof. He's better off at home. No. That's proof that he still has more to learn. Hey, hi, Mr. Dixon. Hi. hi. Mr. Dixon? Matt? You really think I was wrong? What do you think? Yeah. You know, I really enjoyed building that park. I enjoyed doing it with Bernie, Jason, all the rest. And I enjoy doing it here. Well, then there's something to be said for civilization and those people who try to improve it, huh? What should I do at the end of the year? Go back to the mountains? What does your father say? He says whatever I want. That's what I say. I'm going to go find some of the kids. I have a few apologies to make. See the rap session. Matt, you did a good job at the park. What's he smiling about? Oh, baby's happy. Oh, that's nice for him. By the way, you can make an announcement at your next rap session. About what? Well, the, uh, the building department was so impressed with what the kids did that they've decided to change their schedule. They're going to start that park next month instead of next year. How did you manage that? Me? No. no the, all the credit goes to the building department. Of course, uh, the high school principal is not without a little bit of influence in City Hall. How long do you think it'll take the city to rebuild the park? How long do you take the kids? Three weeks. It'll take the city six weeks. Six? Sure, they gotta stand in line to get all those permits. <laughs> Alice, you know what you were saying about lifestyles? What, you mean about changing them? Yeah. Well, the more I think about it, the more I like the idea. Well, why do you want to do that? Well, I don't really know. It's just that I feel like I'm in a rut and I need something really important to get me out of it. Oh. Well, what's the matter? You don't sound as enthusiastic about the ideas you did. Well, I guess I'm not really. Yeah, I think I'm just probably a city girl at heart. Chicken. Matt! Morning. Hi. Hi, guys. Hi. Matt, you forgot to fill out the computer cards for your gym class. Oh. Okay, Miss McIntyre. 